Today, we are finally talking about the Cobalt Kinetics CK Pro. Now, for those of you who've been around for a while, you will know that Cobalt Kinetics was kind of known as a gamer rifle. And then recently, Aaron and Mikey took over and they've been slowly working to change the perspective and change the goal and the direction that the company's going. So now they're less of a gamer gun and more of a LE self-defense type of rifle, a duty rifle, if you will. And they've done a great job of changing the culture there. And so what is the relevance of this particular rifle and the changes they've made in the current market? Now with current weapon platforms, there's not a lot we can change until we change the cartridge. So until we're shooting like laser beams, so long as we're shooting the same style of projectiles and the same rounds that we're currently shooting, there's not a lot we can do outside of making them either more efficient or making them more accurate. So Cobalt have set out to attack both of those in what they've done with the new CK Pro series. The most notable change is gonna to be to their receiver set. So with the AR platform, one of the issues we run into is how the barrel interfaces with the barrel nut and in turn the rail and upper receiver. They, they have a bunch of videos on their YouTube channel and on their website, they explain all this way better than I do. But at the end of the day, most rails will attach to the barrel nut in some way, shape, or form. And what happens is, is ultimately this rail then acts as a lever. So as we're either pushing down on that or we're laying it down on something and it's pushing up from the bottom, it's acting as a lever. Now it may not seem like much, but some of you guys who are like 240 pounds, 6'4", when you start laying all that weight in there, we do get deflection. It does start to mess with the, the barrel and how it's interacting with the barrel nut on the upper receiver. So what they've done is they've changed that entire design and now the barrel nut and the rail operate in isolation of each other. So the rail is, they, is, basically they have an extension that comes out. The rail screws directly into that on the upper receiver without ever having to touch the barrel nut. So then all the barrel nut has to do is maintain good contact with the barrel and keeping it in the upper receiver in the same spot without there being that deflection coming from the rail. But if you get some of the cheaper rails or other uh, rail and barrel lockups, you will notice some of that deflection if you start to you know, put weight on top of the rail or push up from underneath it, you will notice a point of impact shift um, if you're zeroing or if you're out of distance. This is one way they've worked to improve the accuracy of the gun. The other thing that they do with their upper and lower receivers is the hand fitment. So one of the things you'll notice is the way the rail lines line up with the upper. And they actually go through and hand file these down uh, and the way they put these together to make sure that everything lines up so that you are getting a top quality and top notch billet upper and lower receiver set along with the rail and the way they, they integrate together. Now, looking at the specs and everything else in the gun, there's a few other things they've done and this leads to some of the efficiency out of this gun. So at the front, we have their new muzzle device. And if you guys are familiar with the, the Knight's infamous break that everybody wants but nobody can get and it's crazy expensive, this is essentially their version of that, uh, but it works with dead air. They also have one for OSS. I've heard rumors of others coming out. Uh, it works phenomenally well. The first time I shot the 11.5 version of this, Calvin and I were out shooting and immediately our reaction was like, there's no way this thing is crazy flat. And it, it reduces the amount of gas coming back as well because of how it dissipates it. it. It does its job really, really well. So it'll be something that I would love to put on if they made one for Surefire, I would love to throw it on some of my other guns. Um, I, I will get one of their OSS ones and use that as well. I already use this with the dead air. So hopefully they continue to make other mounts available uh, other to fit other cans so that you can, can use this muzzle device on those. They are running Roscoe barrels inside and we'll talk about, about that a little bit more uh, later on. They do have their own safety design here. It is an ambi safety. It works well, it's nice, I like it. And it's great that you get that out of the box. You are getting ambi control, so you want the ambi charging handle, ambi mag release. You don't get an ambi uh, bolt catch or bolt release. You are getting a Geisley G2S trigger out of there, which is awesome coming out of the box. And then you are going to get their A5 buffer system in the back. Now, one of this is one of the other things that they've done is with their A5 system, their buffer has like a little nipple on the end. And what that does is it sits into the back of the carrier of your BCG. So when the bolt cycles back, what sometimes can happen is that the the buffer weight will start to dip down and you'll get spring bind or that it'll start to grind in there. And that little bit of drag creates inefficiency. Um, and it's also inconsistent because we, we can't control how much that's gonna deflect up or down. So by them putting that on there, it keeps the helps to keep the buffer weight going straight back and straight forward. So you have a more consistent and more efficient cycle of operation. Additionally, they have tuned their gas ports to their buffer weights and the gun cycles very well with and without a can. Now the can that I put on here was the Sandman K and I've had a ton of issues with that particular can getting it tuned properly. And what I mean by that is that I can get the gun tuned properly with the can, I can get the gun tuned properly without the can, but with certain rifles, it doesn't play well going back and forth. 
There was very little difference in the ejection pattern going from suppressed to unsuppressed using the Sandman K on the Cobalt Kinetics. So it was, it was very impressive. Now, all of that contributes to having a more efficient rifle. You have a more efficient cycle of operation, more efficient gassing, uh, and, and it just makes the gun more consistent as a whole. And then on top of that, you throw in what they've done with their upper receiver set, aiding to have a more accurate rifle. So then what's the thing that I don't like about it? Now, as you guys know from other videos, I'm very picky about barrels. It's just where I'm at as a shooter. It's, it's the highest thing on my priority right now because of the style of shooting that I'm doing, especially with all the SPR stuff. The, the Roscoe barrel in there is a good barrel. It works fine for how most people will use it. I would say 99% of people who are gonna shoot this, this gun, it will perform phenomenally well for you. You will have no issues. I will say though, for me and the way that I'm currently shooting, maybe it doesn't perform to the level that I would like it to, but that's me nitpicking. I think it still is a great barrel, especially for a red dot gun. You're not gonna notice the difference. If you're not shooting out to 800, 900, 1,000 yards, you're not gonna notice a difference. Um, but it is a small accuracy deviation. So you can see the group, I grouped it. Um, it shoots MOA, but it doesn't shoot as well as some other barrels that I've used. But it still shoots way better than a lot of other barrels that I have used. That's why I say it is a, a good barrel, um, just probably not my top barrel that I would pick. And that's just me nitpicking. That's just me trying to find something wrong with it. So let's talk performance. How did it, how does it perform? Um, so I've been shooting it off and on for about six months and I've been taking it out and training with it. I haven't had a ton of time to actually film with it because my training schedule has been crazy. But I will tell you the, the felt recoil impulse is super smooth. And obviously with the muzzle device and the brake they have, it's going to run phenomenally well. It's going to feel really good shooting it without a can. But being that it is a shorter gun with a muzzle brake on the end, you're going to feel that blast. So if you're running with a can, still runs great. Uh, again, great felt recoil impulse. It is accurate. Um, it's, it's just a fun. It's just a fun gun to run. It really is. And it's one that I really enjoy training with. It's in my rotation now, so I shoot it all the time, off and on. I, you know, grab the other 12.5. I'll grab this one. They're set up different. One's a red dot gun. One's a scope gun. And I, it's one that that I actually enjoy shooting. It's it's a rifle that I've looked forward to for a while and I was stoked when I finally got it and then have just been enjoying it ever since. The only thing that I that again that I might change is, is maybe the barrel. I mean I might swap that out down the road. I'm gonna shoot this one out and then once I do uh, I'll throw something else in there. I know some of you have asked about like criterion barrels so maybe we throw a criterion in there but because of how this is performed I'm actually really looking forward to maybe down the road later this year I can get my hands on one of their SPRs so they because they build a really good just general rifle, I'm interest, interested to see how their SPR performs with the proof research barrel that I believe they have in there. So looking forward to that, maybe we can make that happen. If you guys wanna see that, leave it in the comments down below. So with all that combined, I would say that this is probably one of the better billet options on the market. And I think people will still probably lean towards the ADM for the price. Um, yeah, obviously the Noveskis, their billets are phenomenal, but I think they're a little bit pricier than these. So based on the price point where these are coming in at, I think it's a great option for a lot of you who are looking to move up from a forged receiver set. Maybe you want the ambi controls, maybe you you like billet, uh, but I think the total package is what really sells it because it's, it's something that you truly can just take off of the shelf and plug and play and never have to worry about it or touch anything on it. The guys at, at Cobalt are phenomenal. They're, they're great to work with and they will answer any of the questions you have. They will help you with anything you need. If you have any issues at all, hit them up and they are, are awesome. So thank you to Mikey and to Aaron for, for sending this out so I could do the review on it. If you guys have any questions, feel like I left anything out, make sure you leave in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, karate chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next one.